Welcome to Best Kept Secrets Travel, episode 22. My name's Morgan. And my name's Will. Hey. And on this episode, we're going to be doing a deep dive into Slovenia. So this Ooh. is part one. Let's roll, roll the intro. The intro. Best friends and that's for life who stay traveling. I'm talking worldwide, 65 countries between the two. Every moment is so unbelievable. Sharing the best kept secrets about the trips and mistakes they made that they can't forget. So tell me if you're ready for a time to remember as they gear up for the next adventure. Yeah. Woo. Best kept secrets travel. Do you know where you go? No. Slovenia. Slovenia is a country in Central Europe that used to be part of Yugoslavia. <laughs> was that the punchline? I... <laughs> <laughs> it was part of Yugoslavia for most of the 20th century. Slovenia is bordered by Austria to the north and Hungary to the far northeast. To the east, southeast and south, Slovenia shares a 416 mile long border with the beautiful Croatia. That could have definitely just said south and east. <laughs> and to the west <laughs> is bordered with Italy. The south. The south, southeast. Southeast. <laughs> Slovenia only became an independent nation in 1991. The earliest record of human settlement in Slovenia was discovered in Hell's Cave, located in the Loza Woods near the town of Orhek. Two stone tools were found which were approximately 250,000 years old, so the first inhabitants of Slovenia's were the Neanderthals. Mm-hmm. In World War I, many Slovenians died... Especially on Full the stop. soccer front in the west of Slovenia. Hundreds of thousands of Slovenes were conscripted to join the Austro-Hungarian army and casualties during the war were in excess of 30,000. Following World War I, Austria-Hungary was defeated and broke up. After the war, Slovenia deferred, declared itself an independent nation. It joined together with Montenegro and Serbia and Croatia on the 4th of December 1918 to form a new nation known as the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes. And in 1929, the name was changed to Yugoslavia. That's definitely much shorter and easier. Well, in 1945, the Nazis were defeated. Slovenia became one of the republics of Yugoslavia, which was a new communist nation, and it was not until 1991 that it became a free independent country. In, in 1992, the European community recognised Slovenia as an independent nation, and the country moved towards getting membership of the EU and NATO, joining both in 2004. Slovenia was always the richest region of the former Yugoslavia, and the transition from a communist economy to a free market was achieved quickly. On the 1st January 2007, it became the first of the new EU member states to join the Eurozone, and in 2008, it became the first former communist state to hold the EU presidency. Now, we'll go through some random facts. What is the capital of Slovenia? I don't know. <laughs> Lub. <laughs> Lub- At least I didn't say it. Ljubljana. Lub- and it's Ljubljana. 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 Did you know that there is one winery or vineyard for every 75 people? Slovenes love their wine. That's yeah. quite impressive. Imagine that in the UK. That's a lot. Yeah. But are they just really small? Small vineyards, uh, potentially, potentially small vineyards. That they, I guess that sort of depends on what their definition of a vineyard is. So there's two point one million people in Slovenia. Yeah, twenty eight thousand vineyards. Hmm. Well, Slovenia has ninety thousand beekeepers, which. Considering there are only 2 million people in the population, it's quite impressive. 
I do wonder if they have enough space and pollinators for this amount of bees. Because even in London, we have a problem with too many beekeepers. Interesting. I didn't know that was a particular issue. Yeah. London's way too dense with beekeepers and there's not enough pollinators to keep them alive and to sustain all those colonies. So we need more roof gardens. More roof gardens. More wall gardens. More... You know, the ones that are... Greater green space. So remove rubble in parks and actually plant nice, nice plants and flowers and good pollinators. Mm Mm-hmm. So I wonder if Slovenia can actually cope with 90,000 beekeepers. Uh, who knows? Maybe, maybe we need... Someone should know. So, someone should tell us. Someone if should you tell know us. the answer, please, please tell us. drop up a message on any of our podcast channels, on YouTube, on Instagram. You can drop us an email as well at thebksTravel at gmail.com. Or just randomly comment on our TikTok on or Best Kept Secrets send Travel. Me, send Morgan a postcard. His address... I'm not going to tell you. Is very high up, and, and there's a bit to the left, and it's to the south, the southeast, and the east of that. Just next to Italy. Yeah, yeah. The annual peace index, the world's leading measure for national peacefulness, puts Slovenia in seventh place out of 163 nations. Mm. So that probably means that you should feel pretty peaceful and. Hopefully that comes together with safe as well. Pretty peaceful. So it would be weird if it was a peaceful country, but also very dangerous. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to peacefully rob you. Thanks. <laughs> I mean, so I assume it's quite good for solo travel and being safe when traveling then. We'll go with that. Peaceful robbing. Yes. That's that's what you need to know about Slovenia, apparently. <laughs> Peaceful robbing. Well, you know what lake I'm about to talk about, Morgan? Yes, I do. You, of course you did. I want to get it right. Kirknika? Kirknika? I would say it would be Cirknika. Cirknika. Lake Cirknika in Slovenia is an intermittent lake. An what does that mean? intermittent lake is one that disappears seasonally. And what does that mean for the people who don't know what that means? Is from one season the lake's there? It's like from the next season the lake isn't there. <gasps> so it's like when you invite a friend to come and play airsoft or a game and you expect them to be there and sometimes they're there or sometimes they're in the Caribbean. And when you're not expecting them to be there, they are there. Yes. Potentially. Oh. But because we know the seasons, it is there and isn't there. We do know when it will be there and not there. Perfect. And the lake could potentially go to the Caribbean. Yeah. yeah. Probably has been at some point. Yeah, I, I, I'd assume so. And the post office, of course, most recent study in skiing costs highlighted Kranskagora as the cheapest ski resort in Europe. Hmm. I wonder wonder how good that is. So do I. Maybe we should go. Should we go? Let us know if we should go. And then you go. Slavia. Slavia. Slovenes invented the wheel. Kind of. (laughs) The Ljubljana Marshes wheel is the oldest ever found. Radiocarbon dating puts it at around 5,150 years old. That is old. That is pretty old. I'm surprised we don't have an older wheel. But I assume... When did we invent the wheel? We don't know. (laughs) That is true. I think, well, maybe we just need to ask Fred Flintstone. There must be older cave drawings than that, which have wheels in them somewhere. Surely. Potentially. How long ago were the Egyptians for? Uh, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I know that in Somaliland has some of the oldest cave paintings in the world. So if we'll you want to find there. those paintings, we'll start there. We'll start We're going to start our mission there. 
the only living baby dragon is in Slovenia. The Olm, also known as the baby dragon, lives in the Postina caves in Slovenia. This creature can live up to 100 years and only breeds once or twice a decade. Some people believe this ancient creature is proof that dragons existed. What about Komodo dragons? Um, I don't think Komodo dragons breathe. These don't breathe. But they fire. run super fast. They're massive. They're more dragon. How how big is this baby dragon? Is it going to be tiny? Oh, it's like a exotal, exotal. Oh, what the Pokemon? No, the uh, <laughs> yeah, I've seen these before. It's very similar. It's the same family as that. It breathes once a decade. So explain it. Describe it. Explain it. Or <laughs> describe it. Wrong word. I don't know. It looks like it looks like an albino snake with tiny little arms. It does look like a snake with arms. It really does. Uh, an adult weighs 17 grams. So this is what I mean they when it's really small. declared vulnerable. This population is still decreasing. Okay. Um, well, breeding once or twice a decade is, is not very much. Is an Olm related to an Exotal? They may seem somewhat similar in appearance, yet... Completely unrelated, in fact. <laughs> uh, natively occur on two different continents. The Olm calls Middle Europe home, whilst the Exotal is based in South America. Surely they can still be related. Hmm, don't trust that. I don't trust that at all. What trustworthy source Exotal's do you Exotal's really lifespan is 10 to 15 years. Not 100. No. So, it's a bit know. different. It's a blind cave salamander. Is how I'll describe it. That, that That's also, what National Geographic's telling me. That also kind of makes sense as well. The way They're it's saying works. that it's the cross between Peter Pan and Gollum. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure how. Well, cause it National never Geographic, up. can you please explain this? Because it never grows up. Also called the Proteus bald. and the human fish for its pale pinkish skin. It's mm -hmm. also spent so long adapting to life in caves that it's almost completely blind. So this is, so if our pronunciation's awful, it's O-L-M, and then type in dragon after it's that. It's kind of cool, but really weird at the same time. It must be tiny. It's really strange, yeah. If it's full size, it's 17 grams. That that well, really, really is tiny. Did you know, though, Morgan? <gasps> oh, my God. The Trucian Shrew, weighing in at only two grams, is the lightest mammal in the world. This little known, fascinating creature is found natively in Slovenia. How small is this? Oh my goodness. I'll get the picture. Just how small is it? Two grams, you said. Oh my god, it's like a miniature comedian. It honestly that looks like the size of It looks like a baby baby mouse. It, yeah, it does. I'm it, surprised it doesn't weigh more than two grams. Kind of the size of your, f like, the your almost fingertip, basically, yeah. and then has a bit of a tail. It looks like a cross between a mole and a mouse. Yeah. Wow. That is very unique and strange. Otherwise known as Savvy's Pygmy Shrew. <laughs> okay. Or the Pygmy White Tooth Shrew. Interesting. It is. The five. It's the size... Of a five cent coin. That is small. That's tiny. That is very, very small. The grandmother of all European chimneys is the chimney of the power station in Triblovlu. T R B O V L J E at 1,180 feet or 660 meters and is the tallest in Europe. And I know that but at one, why? Point, one point in time you could do tours to go to the top of this. And I know that some people. Why is it the grandmother though? Like knights hit. It's, well, it's just, just the size. Because it. it's quite big, yeah. 
It's pretty big and it's cool. To maybe it's a grandson. Maybe it's Three, a tall grandson. Three hundred and sixty meters for a for a chimney is quite big. It's pretty tall. Pretty tall for a small person. Okay. The old vine in Maribor, Slovenia, is at least four hundred years old and is believed to be the oldest vine in the world. Well. Wow. Logan Paul, you've been beaten by this old vine in Maribor. Cause... Yeah, I thought vine was only around for like four years. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> At least 400 years. Clearly. Yeah. Vine people, Cody Co, calling you out. <laughs> you're calling Cody Co out? Yeah, because I know if they ripped into our podcast, then at least... We have to be on their platform to be ripped into, which means we get loads of followers. But if we're talking about it and describing the game plan, doesn't that mean that it's less likely that it's going to happen? Because obviously it's very likely that it's going to happen. I don't know. I think think Cody and Noel are too chicken. Too chicken? I think they're too chicken to call us out. The too chicken, okay. Would you say that to his face? Even though we're YouTubers, who... Cody, he's so small. He's so small. I sat next to him in a fish and chips in London. He's so, he does, yeah. He won't even remember that. Cody doesn't even know that you sat next Cody to him. Cody, Co, if you're watching this right now, you won't remember we sat in a fish and chips in London when you were at a Vine US and UK meetup. And I'm calling you out right now to to watch this podcast and to rip into us. Because we'll use it purely for clout. That's, that's yeah. I was about to say, say he gains no value we'll just be from clout. this whatsoever. But pl- yeah, do it. Yeah, clout. Do or it. if you're man enough, we'll have a YouTube boxing fight. <laughs> <laughs> Small YouTuber versus big YouTuber, just for clout as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's the end of my. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're, we're back, calling back to out. the traveling. Most Instagrammable locations. For all of those gramtastic people out there who Ooh. like gram, want to film a TikTok. On Talking of TikTok, we're going to plug ours right now. Best kept secrets travel. With no spaces in the name. Fantastic. <laughs> That's the sort of place where you'll be able to get great examples for this, great information to send to your friends. Top tips, top hacks, best kept secrets of the traveling nation. We even do what they called reactions. We even do reactions. Yeah, better than Cody Cohen. No, I react a lot. No, it's Noel. Noel. Like Father Christmas. First place is Lake Jasna. Oh, in Kranksagora. This crystal clear water lake is located in the beautiful area of Kranksagora. Encompassed by jagged mountain peaks and stunning panoramic views, it's impossible to take a bad photo here, unless you're blind, regardless of the season. Still possible, even if you're blind, it's still possible to take a good photo. No, they're saying to take a bad photo. In the winter, enjoy hot wine by the frozen emerald lake, and in summer, enjoy an ice cream under the sun. Why not wine still? Yeah. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, this this next one's a bit of a Will Smith. What is it, Morgan? Slap. Periknik Falls in Mostrava, Mostrana. Next, next is... Do you want to start that again? Periknik Waterfall, located in the Valley of Vrata, near Mostrana... It's totally worth stopping off at this spot on your way to Lake Bled, which we will talk about multiple times because it's stunning. Beautiful all year round. It's often frozen during the winter and makes for a refreshing, a refreshing dip in the summer. Ooh. Definitely one of Slovenia's best kept secrets. You'll likely have this place all to yourself and there's also a free car park on site. Allow for a picturesque 15 minute hike to the waterfall where you can walk behind the falls or continue to the top for a breath. 
breathtaking view. <sighs> Took my breath away that morning. Thanks. I try. Oh, someone get this one a bandage because this lake bled. <laughs> lake bled? No. <laughs> Okay, I need to breathe. No Slovenian itinerary is complete without a visit to this bleeding lake, otherwise known as Lake Bled. The charming alpine town looks like it landed straight out of a storybook, with the pinnacle being the astonishing Lake Bled. Mm -hmm. Encompassed by the Julian Alps, I'd confidently say that the lake is one of the most picturesque in the world. Even if you haven't seen it before, you probably have. Because it's one of those iconic lakes that are often used as windows, wallpapers. I actually get Lake Bled coming up on my Windows wallpaper every once in a while. Well, we mentioned Slovenia in our last episode on yes. the best places to travel in June. And <laughs> Lake Bled was that place where I said, if you're a keen fisherman, then you could also go fishing. Oh, fantastic. You can also go to the... Ostraka viewpoint. So Lake Bled Ostraka viewpoint is one of the most popular Instagram locations at Lake Bled and is not without good reason. It's very likely again that you've already encountered photos taken at this very spot which allows for jaw dropping views over the vistas, over the lakes and the surrounding mountains. Mm. Sounds pretty pretty. Sounds lovely. Lovely, darling. Sounds lovely because this lake isn't bleeding. No. This is lake. <clears throat> My pronunciation's going to be perfect. Lake Bohinj. B O H I N J. Bohinjko. Jezero, located in <laughs> Mustnikin Gorge, is one of the most beautiful natural wonders in Slovenia. The Alpine Lakes makes for some extraordinary photo opportunities, surrounded by pristine mountain landscapes and lush green meadows. Lake Bohinj is the largest glacial lake in Slovenia. Enjoy a peaceful hike through the woodlands with crystal clear waters. If we hadn't made it clear, Alpine lakes are pretty in Slovenia. Go to them, take pictures of them. Best kept secret. And this next one goes on your feet because you're going to Soccer Valley. Soccer River in Soccer has a distinct emerald green colour and is considered to be one of the most beautiful rivers in Europe. With some of the most photogenic spots in Slovenia here, you don't want to miss this on your Instagram feed. Sorry, I meant feed. Uh, this river flows through waterfalls, no. cascades, and rocky gorges. Perfect for the adventure enthusiasts. Did you like all my puns in there? Because they were intended. No. Skoshan Caves, <laughs> Devaka. When it comes to cave photography in Slovenia, you do not want to miss Scotian Caves. Mm, I don't a, want to miss them. a world heritage site famous for its many waterfalls, many. diverse stalactite formations and limestone pools, also known to have the largest underground canyon, potentially, in the world. A truly spectacular cave system in the southwest of Slovenia that will look epic on your Instagram. So, Epic. Go take pictures. What would your tips from your experiences in caves be oh, I like for a cave. trying to take pictures? Be clever with your lighting. Mm -hmm. If there's already lighting in there, or if there's natural lighting, try and use that to the best of your ability. If you've got head torches, sometimes personally, I try to be right at the back of a group. Mm -hmm. 
and not worry not worry so much and when there are parts where you know you're just walking and there's not as much around and quickly hustle between them so then right at the end you can turn around and try and get photos normally tour guides will also give you the best angles which they recommend i've been in some before mm. one of the uh, largest uh, stalactites in northern hemisphere is in ireland ireland uh and there they told us a photo to try and get and the good thing was i was really long arm so i managed to get it because it was trying to get a reflection over a puddle really going into the puddle of the stalactite actually oh, just I... photographing straight into the puddle but it makes it look like that you're actually photographing stalactite but because the water's just dead still you get a perfect reflection but it gives you a good i think i know that sort of picture yeah. I think I remember that. Oh, I picture. have posted it before. Yeah, you posted it. That that was the yeah. That that was the big part. Uh, so that is wrapping up some of the, and it's definitely not the only. This is just some of the highlights for the most Instagrammable locations. And you can, of course, post these on Instagram or TikTok and hashtag BKS Travel, and we will have a look at them. Or you could just tag us, which also also works and makes things easier. Don't, it's not a could, you should. Do it. And the other thing you should do is think about the best time to travel to Slovenia. Well, we, It's different for everyone. It is. We already know that June is a very good time. We do. And that's also why if you're more keen into alpine, you know, sort of going to Snow ski resorts, stuff, typically, yeah. same as most places in Northern Hemisphere, you go December in winter. to March. I was just answering the question. Yes. Did I answer it? No. No. Seeing as December to March isn't just winter. True. December to March. <laughs> well, mm. warm and dry conditions, sort of from May to September. And as we stated in the episode, June is a perfect time because you get the good combination of the weather and the pricing and the right level of tourism for the destination. It's also perfect for climbing hiking, cycling, white water rafting, kayaking, fishing, and going to bleeding lakes. Who doesn't like bleeding lakes? Uh, yeah. Makes complete sense to me. And now let's move on to one of our favourite parts of the episode. Whoop, whoop. Which, of course, is the language. The language. So I, I know that you've been practising your Slovenian. Oh, yeah, I have. Um, so, g good day, if we were to greet each other. Dobro dan. Dobro dan. That was the best action accent I've s heard from you. So, h how would you say how much is something? Uh, I'd probably go along the lines of Koli Kota Satane. Nice. Koli Kota Satane. Yeah, let's go for that. And if you wanted to do the most important thing, you walk up to this beautiful crisp bar, you're warm, you've, you've been out hiking, you've been at a bleeding lake. Ino pivo, I need that one biro. Ino pivo. Exactly, one beer. Ino pivo. Ino pivo. <laughs> such an English accent. Ino pivo. Pino, Pivo. It's like, can I, can a I have a glass of Pino? Yeah, can I have a glass of Pino? An Eno, Pino, please, for Eno, me. Pino. An Eno, Pino. An Eno, Pino. And how do you say thank you once you've had that Eno, Pivo? Havala. Havala. Yavala. Havala. Havala, Yavala. Havala, Yavala. Havala, Yavala. Merci. Thank you. That was my best ever pronunciation in one of our episodes. Uh, that was genuinely the best. The best that you've ever done. So well ever done. done. That's because I'm just fluent, you know, nowadays. It's just... better than your English, yeah. What? Huh? What language? I don't know. If you want to go to Slovenia, other than booking it, you need to, you need to sort of know where you're landing so then you can sort out everything else. And you sort of need to and know that look. for when you're booking it. Makes sense. That, that's, exactly. That's good if you go on most booking websites, it'll normally tell you the main ones. But in case you're slightly worried, you can fly directly to Ljubljana from Brussels, Paris, London, Munich, Frankfurt, Amsterdam, Moscow, Vienna, 
don't recommend Moscow at the moment. Zurich, Copenhagen, Istanbul, Belgrade, Pristina. <laughs> really? Morgan's going to say it for you. No, no. I've... Unfortunately, there no, no, are on, only on. two low-cost companies. So it's the capital flying. of North Macedonia. Skopje? Close. Skopje. Ah, uh, was close enough. <laughs> there are two, only two, discount airlines which fly to Ljubljana Airport, which are Wizz Air. And another one. <laughs> which Morgan didn't write down in the script. <laughs> there Wizz, are also... Wizz Air's okay, actually. I Wizz Air's my least favourite. Is it? Yeah. I've... They saved me going to Lisbon, so I sort of owe them one. Yeah. There are also direct trains from Germany, Austria, Italy, Switzerland. And Morgan, but how do we pay for this if we're using cash in the country? Udder. You use your euros. You use your euros, and one pound is like one. At point. the time writing, one pound fifteen cent. Fifteen ish, and you're still able to get and use banknotes in Slovenia for the Slovenian tolar, Ooh. which was the previous currency, which is quite you can cool. Still use it. Yeah. It's what quite was exciting. Was our uh, previous currency Morgan in the UK? Can you remember? The Roman pound. <laughs> That was awful. <laughs> awful. Awful, Jake. Most people, when they're booking holidays, they get excited, but a lot of people out there, a lot of our followers, a lot of people who want to know, they really want to know the cost of travelling to Slovenia. Ooh. So we're going to break down some of the simple prices. So, price of a hostel on average is... £16. Pounds. And, and this, this includes... Hotel Celica. Yeah, fine. Which we'll talk about in part two. And the average the and the average price of a beer is about two and a half euros. It's about just over two pounds. Yeah, about two pounds ten. <coughs> Bless you. All good. The best method of transport around the country, and we have heard that the roads in Ljubljana are pristine just like the lakes <laughs> just like the lakes they're very well made they're very clean they're pretty they're a smooth thing to ride on yep and Slovenia is a very green country so hiking around and using bikes on the many trails and biking paths is always a good option the bus system is both an efficient and effective way to discover Slovenia's many different and diverse pockets. The country's main hub clearly is... Obviously, Ljubljana. <laughs> and it's by far the biggest and most connected of Slovenia stations. Booking tickets online will not only get you to the coast or the mountains, usually within a couple of hours, but you'll be travelling like a local. If you all want, if you want to travel like a local, that means you need to eat like a local too, which means we need to change the battery. And action! You don't just want to travel like a local; you also want to eat like a local. And if you've got a sweet tooth, the main traditional dish out there is a cake. Teeth don't taste of anything. How'd it be sweet? It's a cake. And patika is a traditional Slovenian cake that is served on special occasions and important events. Basically, patika in a, you know, is a nut roll pastry. There's more than 80 different fillings, but the traditional one includes walnuts, hazelnuts, and tarragon. Ooh. Patika is normally, normally called rolled dough. And mm. is the most famous Slovenian the most. Cake. And it's almost everywhere in the world known and recognised as an ambassador for Slovenia. The oldest written source about Patiga was mentioned in 1689 in the famous book The Glory of the Duchy of Carniola written by Janusz Vajkad Val. The sword. 
Sounds like Bulbasaur. <laughs> Originally, the role was prepared only for the nobles and the upper class, but was later also popular in the lower classes. Oh, that sounds very tasty. And the next on our list is, and I'm 15% sure you've heard of this one before. 15? Yeah. Um, dumplings? Yes. Fantastic. 15%. Bite-sized and bursting with all manner of exotic fillings, the humble Slovenian dumpling is as close to a national dish as Slovenia as any other traditional Slovenian food. Forget mandu or Asian-style dumplings, Slovenians make their own with buckwheat. This gives them a distinctly earthy, nutty flavour. Stuff this with cheese, veal, potato or pork. The result? A melt-in-your-mouth accompaniment to any meal. Mm. This is one of those Slovenian dishes that you'll find in every restaurant menu across the country. So it won't be hard to find. But like all traditional Slovenian food, every single place has its own proud twist on how they do it. Mm. Mm. I actually don't mind buckwheat. Cooked with it a few times at university. Mm. There was a uh, sort of Lithuanian slash Slovenian slash everywhere Slash Asian slash wherever dumplings are from. Yeah, they had they had a lot of strange meats and everything there, but little shop whilst at uni- university, tried it out, bought some buckwheat, bought some weird s- salami esque sausages, which was um weird salami esque sausages. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds tasty. You better not be surprised. I'm not. Good, because you wrote this script. That if you enter a home or a restaurant and are greeted with a small glass of schnapps, you just you just need to drink it. When was the last time you had schnapps? Um, Friday. I was about to say, that response sounds a lot more recent than <laughs> mine was going to be. <laughs> Friday. Friday, what... Where? What were you doing? A Spanish restaurant. When we paid the bill, they gave us beach snaps. Makes sense. That, that, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you can find great bottles of local snaps in bars, it's the homemade snaps that are the best. Brewed in someone's own home, and each one's a bit different. We'll have an old family recipe, which is often passed down generations. And if you want us to do an episode where we make snaps... Or we go just to Slovenia, just to drink snaps. And then we'll come back, day trip. Maybe that needs to be our next TikTok. What, day trip? Because we say, if this video gets this many likes, we're going to fly to Slovenia just to go and drink some snaps. All right, for on a day trip. Yeah, (laughs) just to drink snaps. Yeah. I mean, the cost-benefit analysis is not... Let's let's see. This weekend, I mean a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm a very much yes person. So now if we you're got already a million, saying if we got a, a million lot. Views, I'd accept it. Okay, Ljubljana. Uh, let's do let's do this Saturday. Is it possible? It is possible. I'd not say. Um, how much is it the the best one is uh, 513 pounds you arrive at 1225 and leave at 4 o'clock how much 513 is that for one person yeah because the 232 one you don't you have to stop yeah on the same day you do yeah But you get so little time though. Yeah, two hours probably. <sighs> We're only going for snaps. Can you imagine airport security? What are you doing here? Okay, we'll do it in a couple weeks. Or you just go for an evening and you just drink snaps. Oh, this one's much. No, it's not. 
still 500 plus pounds. A million seems reasonable. A million views, not likes. Yeah, views. A million views on TikTok. Just viral. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Zaganki. Zaganki or corn mush or spoon bread is one of the most widespread Slovenian dishes, particularly those who are prepared with buckwheat flour, buckwheat flour and dressed with cracklings. If you're not a fan of cracklings, you can eat this healthy Slovenian food with sour milk. Oh, I'm not a fan of sour milk. Mushroom soup or chicken stew. Maize zaganki is also delicious with goulash and buckwheat spoon bread with sauerkraut. Hmm. On the side, you can also order pork sausages or blood sausages that you probably get from Blake, Lake Bled. Yeah. Joke, yay. Bad one, but joke. Uh, are any of our jokes good? Yeah, all Don't say yours, yeah. There we go. Carniolian sausage, which is sausage kran style, is the most famous Slovenian food based on the rich heritage of pig processing into meat products. Oh. The earliest mention of this amazing sausage dates back to the early 19th century during the Austro-Hungarian monarchy it's mentioned in a large number of old cookbooks and was known and praised by emperor franz joseph oh that does sound tasty it does i would eat that i would i would try that and finally our last drink is orange wine as we have mentioned before, in our random facts, Slovenia makes some great wine. But we'd like to mention specifically the orange wine. Orange wine is actually becoming quite popular in the US and is popping up in lots of places. And their quick background is basically produced in Slovenia and has nothing to do with oranges. <laughs> and that's the quick background. That's it. <laughs> Try orange wine. I know nothing about it. I'm gonna look at that. <laughs> orange wine is really popular and disgusting. I've had orange wine a few times. Have you? Yeah, I really hate it. What's it like? Vile. Just disgusting. Describe it. Orange. It's not like any other wine. It really isn't. It's not like a rosé white wine or red wine. Some people weirdly like it. I passionately detest it. Orange wine is not... It's a top Slovenian wine. Orange wine are made in Slovenia and they're a mixture of white wine made through a process that is intended for red wines. In Slovenia, orange wine makers use this whole process of producing white wines through the process of red wines, which later spread across the world and gained much popularity among wine experts and wine enthusiasts alike. The main feature of orange wine in Slovenia is the maceration or prolonged contact with the grape skins. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, I don't like it. Cool. More importantly than orange wine... Oh, worth trying, just so you know that you don't like it. Slovenian honey. What's it? Okay. So I'm not going to like Slovenian honey. Slovenian honey is no surprise. They've got 90... Why do they have these? Morgan. Yes. Slovenian honey. Tell me about it. They have 90,000 beekeepers with just a population of 2 million people in Slovenia. Wow. So of course Slovenian honey is going to be big. That's what just because they produce a lot? They have so many beekeepers. Of course they're going to produce a lot. I wonder how many bee... Like, whether they have the most... Do you reckon they just have tiny beehives? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I reckon... Or a strange species of bee. Maybe they yeah. just ke- keep them up in their roof. Yeah, maybe they have strange bee... Maybe they have strange beehives. But the bee tourism industry in Slovenia right now... Is Eco-tourism is enormous off. right now. 
So if you like bees, if you want to learn more about bees, if you want to go overseas and learn about bees and have some oh, sweet, sweet coming. honey with those bees, go to Slovenia. Why not? Why not? That's, that's true. And this is a great place to finish on a sweet ending. Roll the so. outro. Yeah, let's make it happen. I hope that you can handle uh, going on adventures. Best kept secret travels. Yeah, all over the globe. Having fun, you know the deal. Amazing secret locations. Hang out with Morgan and Will. Uh, educating, entertain, haggle in the market. Uh, sharing their experiences. Time to get it started. Let's go.